I, I guess for me, what, what I would say on the topic is it feels like feels like um, it really just depends on what happens to you in, in the stage games. Like, because we have double elimination now, you can go in with, like, whatever, like, headstrong mentality you have, and you can kind of, like, go through that for the, for the first series. And then as soon as, when, as soon as you, like, win or lose that series, I feel like that's really going to define what you're going to play for from then on out. So, like, I think that Rogue is going to be very similar to how we saw them in the Mad Lion series going forward into G2. They're going to be playing the same type of picks. Like, I don't think they're going to be going back to the GP, even though the GP was um, banned before. I feel like they kind of have their identity set where it's like, all right, we are a Hecarim Eve. Like, we are Fnatic uh, light in terms of, like, drafting. You know, we're just going to play that type of uh, series because they feel like everything's on the line. Also, uh, I just feel like because Fnatic beat G2 – that gives more confidence to Rogue as like since they're drafting similarly as to like their chances to beat G two, um, and yeah, like what picks that they could utilize to do that, and I think that just leads into the next topic, which is Rogue versus G two, which is our next um, series that we're gonna see. Winner of this ends up in finals. Uh, most people obviously are writing off Rogue similarly to how everyone wrote off Fnatic um, because G two just always beats Rogue. It seems. Uh, do you think there's any chance, Kajol, of Rogue actually upsetting G two here and making it to finals? Well, I don't think Rogue have ever beat G2 this year, as far as I can remember. But it was the same. Yeah, it was the same story for Fnatic. Fnatic was 0-7 going into the series, so I don't know if that's something to go off. But I don't know if they have mental edge or anything G2. But I think the biggest factors are. I think there's two arguments for both sides, right? G2 lost to Fnatic, so they have to win now. So they're in full try-hard mode. So you can argue that G2 is going to try their absolute best against Rogue. Then you have Rogue, who's like found a really good style for them, and they're looking super good as well. So it's hard to say. I mean. Just based on his, like historically, I would say G2 will probably win the series because of how good they are. Backs against the wall, best of fives. It's basically their comfort zone. Um, but the Rogue are looking good. I think their mid jungle is really strong. I think their AD carry is fitting pretty well into the meta, kind of with like the Senna and stuff, like the supportive style. And their top laners found his form with like more tank orientated. So I think Rogue is looking super strong. I just don't think it's strong enough for like peak performance G2 backs against the wall have to win best of five comfort zones. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's my take. I'll give, you, I'll give you an angle for both teams because here's the weird thing. I actually think the mid matchup is super interesting because on the one hand, as like Kedril said, after losing to Fnatic, Larson just himself just took the fucking lotion. He was like, oh, well, that works. So I'll t you made this. Now I made this. It was like that fucking meme, wasn't it? So <laughs> if, he, if he does that, it'll be a really interesting series. Like if he goes wild with the picks, it could be go all over the place. But if it isn't, it's just the traditional like Roma versus the fucking farmer, isn't it? So I actually wonder how that will work. Like traditionally, Caps isn't the player, unfortunately, that that usually works out for the farmer with because he just goes around the map and kills everyone, doesn't he? He just fucking stood there, just farming with his ear or something. So it's not going to be great. So I really want to see what the picks are in mid. Like, if they again, like, I don't think this is a series, not just because of the last one, where they're going to be going Oriana at zero on fucking Caps all the time. Surely you don't because that's already what Larson's going to pick as it is. So there's one angle I think is interesting because even though I actually thought Larson was the other best mid in Europe, certainly, like, you can see why the edge in the playoffs would go Caps' way. And then for top lane, Listen, Wonder wasn't great in the Fnatic series. He definitely had some problems, but Wonder could just win this whole series himself. Come on, he could just smash this if he wants. Mm -hmm. So I, I need to know what form he's in, basically. Yeah, I, I have confidence that Wonder will absolutely destroy Finn. Also, Wonder yeah, is like, always Wonder's good when it good. matters. Like, so I, I, I have so much confidence in Wonder as a player to like show up. And even in, in, the, in the series, like... In the series versus, versus Fnatic, I didn't think that Wonder was specifically bad or, or anything. And even in, like, game no, one, No, he just right? didn't carry, though. You know, people think Whipple's such an inter. They expected him to just smash the series, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, I mean, I feel like he was carrying games. Like, the first game where they lost, I feel like that... If, if the other if the team played better, like, individually, if the other side of the map was stable, he would have carried that whole game alone because he solo killed Whippo as Nar versus Rengar, which, number one, if the Rengar is losing lane uh, to a Nar, the Nar is going to absolutely destroy him in team fights. Um... And then, like, he was also able to, like, force out TP, uh, get a TP advantage, TP bot, and get a kill for, or get a kill bot lane. So, I really felt like he was in position to carry that whole game if everything was, like, a little bit more reasonable um, going forward. But I guess the 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 thing that, um, the only way I could see G2 losing would, would be if Inspired <laughs> just hard jungle diffs Yankos, like, carries the entire game, yeah, like, picks these, I agree. picks these, like, E picks, these Hecarim picks, and just really, really pops off. Um, and yeah, like, do you, I, I guess, I guess what I'd ask Cajel is like, do you think that this is actually possible? Do you think that Yankos will get outmatched by Inspired in the series? Uh, possibly. I think Inspired is definitely better in the meta for sure. I think, I think 
what Rogue has got going for them into the G2, uh, G2 Rogue series is like, I think Rogue's mid jungle is really strong. I think Larsen Caps is really even. I think Inspired has the edge over Yankos probably as well. So I think that's where their strengths are. I think obviously they have weaknesses when it comes to Wunder versus Finn. I think Wunder is obviously better. I think he's really strong. But I think Inspired will be will be pretty important in the series, I'd say. I think if he can get like Evelyn, Hecarim and stuff like this and actually carry the games, then I think G2 has a problem. They probably need to start banning out carry junglers more and start picking blue side, banning out even two, three junglers if they have to. Uh, but I think Larson is also a big threat. So I think mid jungle is a big threat for Rogue going into the series. Uh, I think the side lanes aren't as big as a big as a threat. I wouldn't say that they're either like super losing either. I think like Hans Vander versus Perks Mickey is obviously favorite for G2, but I think that they're obviously still a good bot lane. So it all comes down to mid jungle for me, but I still think G2 is favorite, but yeah. Yep. Here's the problem. Are you ready for some speculation? Pure yeah. speculation here. I'm just doing this off narratives I've made in my own mind. So why change the habit of a lifetime? Right. I actually think in this series, here's my call. I think Inspired chokes in this series. Because here's the thing. Unlike self made, I actually think Inspired's one of those players who looks up to Jankos. Like that's like his fucking hero in the in the Polish jungler hierarchy. That guy's a legend. So in that scenario, like I've already seen Inspired in the past last year have some really dodgy playoff games where it looks like pressure got to him. So if you're Jankos, just go on autopilot, mate. Just play smooth. You don't have to do anything crazy. Just let the other guy feed, basically. Whereas you, you I know people are going to think already, but wait a minute, why wouldn't self made do that? Are you aware of the personalities of these people? Self made was a fucking L9 player. This guy motherfucker's toxic. He probably never thinks he lost a game ever. Probably always the mid laner, wasn't it? Like, so why would he be worried if he was in a bad team losing? So perfect player to think they can win no matter what. So there we go. There's my call. There's yeah, the makes, call. It makes sense. Uh, one, call in century, just a call, isn't it? Yeah. Well, uh, Kajra, what one last question. You think that Lucian ends up being banned by G2 in the series? You think that they, they ban Lucian versus uh Versus, versus Larson because Larson did pull it out. Um, he looked pretty good on it when he did play it. Obviously, it enables the Eve a lot more. It doesn't really seem like a Caps champion to me. I mean, I feel like Caps can play anything, but I just don't feel like you would prefer to play something like um, the Lucian, generally speaking. Like, where, do you think the G2 just bans it throughout the whole series? Mm, I think game one, they should leave it open. I mean, it's all up to Caps if he can counter it. I mean, I don't know. Can you counter Lucian I, mid? I don't know. Maybe he, they try something Isn't like there a no uh, there's no like hard count to Lucian. There's like nothing really hard wins. I mean, there's champs that win after six, like maybe ready and stuff like this. Or I don't know. There's nothing that really stomps him. Maybe a Kali if she can get through the lane phase, or LeBlanc if she has a good jungler. But I think in general, I think it's better to leave it open for the first game, see what you can do. I mean, I think Caps is probably gonna have that discussion with Grabs. Like, so we leave the Lucian open. What do you think we should play? And maybe he has some things that he can try. Like I don't know, like any Relia mid. Maybe it could work against Lucian if you can get through the early few phases. Maybe even like a Yasuo could work into Lucian. Um, but I think they'll leave it open for game one if Caps has a counter. If they ban it game one, it means Caps obviously has said, like, yeah, there's nothing counters this champ. It's, I mean, it is really broken right now, so I wouldn't blame him for saying it either. And it does fit their whole champion pool and it unlocks the jungle and stuff like this. So it, it would be a good gun, just not for the lane phase. But if Caps says that, like, oh, we can just play Radia Sejuani into it and just stomp him or something like this, then mm -hmm. they will definitely try it game one. Doesn't work, ban Lucian. But I think it could, they could try it. Yeah.